Blog Talk Radio. Transition. The process of change from one condition to another. We are now at a new crossroads where change is evident once again. What does not serve must transform a new. Returning to our original state of oneness and true nature of that which created who we truly are. Confusion was the way of the past. Enlightenment is the way of the now and future. Shedding shadows the layers of the sea. We now bring you the transformation of the two who started as one. Our fearless fearless planet planet never never stands stands still. Earth Earth has has been been in a process of transition. Not exactly this remarkable, ongoing reality. Welcome Welcome to Transition Radio. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Angela Cummings, your host. And I am Lena Lopez, your hostess. We're broadcasting live from the beautiful land of enchantment, Silver City, New Mexico. We wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsors, TheBreastFormStore.com. They have everything you can imagine to enhance your feminizing needs. Well, as well as Spunk's Lube, which is an award-winning personal lubricant that's glycerin-free, non-staining, 100% sex toys safe with all materials, and it's fun to use. Visit their website at SpunkLube.com to check out their amazing line of products. And use the code TR and you will receive a 10% discount. If you enjoy our show, please tell your friends and neighbors. Share our website and donate if you can. Today is Friday. Yes, Friday, yes. And it is relationship and spirituality segment on today's broadcast. And speaking of relationships, I must say, we have an amazing relationship. I would say. (laughs) In spite of all the challenges we've been through, this has been no doubt the most incredible relationship I've ever experienced. Ditto. Absolutely. I am just absolutely amazed every day as we grow in our love one for another and just how we're able to just overcome any obstacle that comes our way. And to think, you know, I'm 50 years old. I've I've had my share of relationships. You know, some were good, some were not so good. Some lasted 10 years, some lasted five. I have never in my 50 years have I experienced the kind of understanding the exchange that you and I have. Even when we disagree, we are adults about it, and we talk and we communicate something that I did not have in many of my other relationships. People normally do not know how to communicate, and I believe that's a major important Well, I think that that is really key and critical to any relationship that is going to stand the test of time. And um, basically, I just am enamored by your person, your personality, and everything that is you. So... Whatever it is that we're going through, if we don't agree or whatever, it's not a matter of arguing, you know, it's not a matter of fighting, it's a matter of finding a solution and in love coming to an understanding. That's what most people fail to understand when they go into a relationship, that, you know, relationships do take work, it takes two, there's obviously two different characters that come together and you learn to become one. You learn to understand one another and you build upon that. You know, nowadays a lot of the younger generation don't know how to do that. You know, they they just throw things away. Well, I think a lot of the younger generation, they don't know how to communicate because they're always on their texting devices or on Facebook and, you know, our generation used Facebook as a connection to, like, old high school friends and other people like that. But it seems like the newer generation, you know, they don't use Facebook as much, but they text and Twitter and do these Tumblrs and all these other things that, you know, allows them to communicate. But 
socially, they're inept at being able to really Comedian. relate. Yeah, exactly. And they're in their video games and, you know, they they have no real life experience. You know, they, they live their life through what they see on television and, you know, they just don't know how to really have a good intimate relationship, I truly believe. And, and it really takes two, and it really takes two to understand each other and to work through whatever they have to face. I find one of the uh, amazing things about you and I is the fact that we are two-spirited and have been able to connect Absolutely. in that, in both our nature, in both our male and female side. Yeah, I mean, when I saw you, um, when I first met you, when I was in the ICU at the hospital, the first person that I actually saw was not Mark. It was your former genetic woman self, Maritza. And um, that's what you saw in me. You saw Paul. Paul. And you wanted to come and take care of me. And that's the beauty of our relationship is that it's not based on just one particular side of the gender spectrum, but that it involves so much more and it is so much deeper and it goes beyond gender. It goes into our spirits communicating to one another and understanding who each other really is, regardless of gender. Definitely. And I think that a lot of people can learn from that. A lot of so-called gender and uh, genital aligned individuals, um, a lot of gay couples or lesbian couples could learn from understanding that there is a male side and a female side in everyone as much as we try to hide it. And I think right. coming to terms with that and balancing both of those energies makes for a better individual. Well, I think what we have to offer is that we embody the two genders, you know, in a very, um, you know, <laughs> you see what you get, you know, that's what you, people, you know, that's what they see when they see us. So I just think that being able to have this tremendous type of gift of person is something that should be appreciated and something that should, people should really look up to understanding, you know, because we get, certain things that certain cisgender people wouldn't understand, you know, about gender and about, you know, how to express yourself and to be able to kind of circumnavigate that gender line easier than a lot of people would. It's a tremendous uh, gift because walking life in both gender is an amazing, amazing gift. I mean, I know how a man feels and I know how a woman feels. And I think that that can just bring upon some great gifts to a relationship. Not to mention some great sex. Oh, yeah, that too. I mean, you know. in my uh, 50 years, and I hope this is not too uh, TMI for those that are listening, but I have never experienced a more complete sense of of wholeness in the bedroom with anyone as I do with Ivana. Well, it's pure, Mark. It's it's um not you know tainted it's it's very very clean uh what we do experience in our love for each other and our appreciation for each other because i appreciate everything that maritza was i appreciate everything that mark is I, you know i just you know i appreciate all of you and it's not just a part that i take and then, and then i leave the other like my ex has done to me you know would accept the the male side of everything, but once I promoted the or exhibited any feminine traits of any kind, I was completely shut down, you know, as a person. So this experience with you is something that I know that I don't have to hide. I don't have to, you know, be somebody that I'm not. I don't have to put part of myself on the shelf. I mean, I can be my total self with you and you ex you appreciate all of it. Totally. I mean, it's, to me, it's, like I said, the most amazing relationship I've ever had and the most amazing experience in the bedroom. And I've had plenty of experience in the bedroom and plenty of relationships. And uh, what I feel with you is just, I feel like a gift 
given to me finally for all these years that that I've had bad relationships and God has finally or the great I am has finally uh, provided us you know well I feel exactly the same way and it really that's kind of the crux of the matter is that it takes to that appreciate each other and love each other unconditionally to make anything work you know um, you have to accept the whole person Exactly. Not just part. Exactly. Well, we found this article uh, called Casual Sex May Be Improving Americans' Marriages. Whoa. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's that's kind of wrong, isn't it? I mean, my Christian upbringing would say casual sex. I mean, you're not supposed to have casual sex. I would believe that. You know, I've experienced in other relationships, and I'm not going to mention names, that uh, the solution was, well, if I ever need something else, it's okay to bring it into the bedroom. And I always thought of that as very wrong because it's like, well, if I'm not enough for this individual, right. then... Linda uh, does not share. No, and Mark does not <laughs> share either. So we're we're you know, on the same page on that one. Anyway, the article reads, an American man and a French woman meet on a train in Eastern Europe. They live on a different continent, or they live on different continents. But before the sun comes up, they have spent the night together. What happens next? You expect the answer to be nothing. It's just a one-night stand in a fairway, faraway place. But the director, Richard Link. Later's trilogy, Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight, the romance blooms into commitment and kids. While some might dismiss this as Hollywood romanticism, it is actually a common experience for the past five years. Oh, excuse me. It's actually a common experience, but for the past five years, my colleagues at Match.com and I have conducted an annual national study called Singles in America. And each year, a majority of survey res- respondents have reported having one night stand, and 27% of our 2014 respondents reported having had a one night stand turn into a long term commitment partnership. We humans are romantic tribe, indeed. Over, <laughs> yes, over 54% of American singles, which make up over half of the adult population believe in love at first sight. I do now. 56% believe laws should make it easier to wed. 89% believe you can't stay married to the same person forever. And remarkably, 33% of American singles believe it's okay to live a satisfactory, to leave a satisfactory marriage if you're no longer passionately in love. In America, as in much of the most industrial world, romantic love is in full bloom. So I have to come to believe that motivated by romance and afraid of what sociologist Andrew Sherlin calls the merry-go-round, or the marriage-go-round, which is, I guess, the same thing as the (laughs) merry-go-round, his singles are ushering a long, pre-committed stage into the courtship process. Fast sex is part of the package. Couples want to get to know everything about a potential life partner before they die the knot. Welcome to the age of slow love. Today, we have queried over 25,000 men and women, to my knowledge, the largest national representative study of singles, and what we have found is an abundance of caution. Take hooking up, an uncommitted sexual encounter between two people who are not currently in a romantic relationship with one another. Hooking up appears reckless. Certainly, those who engage in one-night stands are risking sexually transmitted infections, unwanted pregnancy, and emotional trauma. Nevertheless, in the 2014 Singles in America study, 66% of single men and 50% of single women reported that they had engaged in a one-night stand. And these numbers have varied little over the past five years. Why do we hop into the sack with someone we hardly know? Perhaps you learn about a lot about a person between the sheets. You might even kickstart a real relationship. Any stimulation of the genitals promotes dopamine activity, which can potentially push you over the threshold into falling in love. At orgasm, oxytocin and vasopressin, neurochemicals linked with the feelings of attachment spike. With just one night of casual sex, risky as it is, you may win life's greatest prize, a devoted mating partner. Nevertheless, few race to the altar after a night in bed together. Instead of many instead, many take 
the next cautious step, a friends with benefit relationship. Commitment, life. In this sexual arrangement, a pair has coitus when with well, I can't even read tonight, has coitus when convenient, but they don't appear in public as a couple. Next, many couples move in together, another cautious step towards permanent pairing. Living together, a version of the first step of the two-step marriage, emerged in the 1970s, and today what had been scandalous has become routine. In 2012, 58% of those in our singles in America study reported that they have lived with one to five partners outside of wedlock. But discretion still reigns after partners have agreed to marry. In 2014, 36% of singles in our Singles in America study said that they wanted a prenuptial agreement. Even marriage is becoming provisional. Civil partnerships in England, civil unions in U.S., and de facto partnerships in Australia enable a couple to start and end a partnership relatively easy. One night stands, hooking up, friends with benefits, living together, prenups, civil unions, These all spell caution, but they also spell logic because our brain is soft-wired to attach slowly to a partner. The basic circuits for romantic love lie in primitive regions of the brain, near those that orchestrate thirst and hunger. Romantic love is a drive, one of the three basic brain systems that evolved to direct our fundamental human mating and breeding strategy. The sex drive predisposes you to seek a range of mating partners. Romantic love enables you to focus your mating energy on a single individual at a time, and feelings of attachment incline you to form a pair bond, at least through the infancy of a single child. Feelings of romantic love and deep attachment to a partner emerge in a pattern highly compatible with the spirit of the times, that is, with slow love. Romantic love is like a sleeping cat. It can be awakened at any time. Feelings of deep attachment, however, take time, and they can endure. In our study of long-term lovers, those who scored higher on a marital satisfaction questionnaire showed more activity in a brain region linked with empathy, a trait they had most likely retrained from their initial passion or retained from their initial passion. Moreover, when psychologists... Monarch Zhu and her team used my original research design to collect similar brain data on 18 young men and women in China. She found that those who were in love long-term showed activity in a brain region associated with the ability to suspend negative judgment and overall evaluate a partner, what psychologists call positive illusions. Much like men and women who have just fallen madly in love, these long-term partners still swept aside what they didn't like about their mate and focus on what they adored because of feelings of attachment emerge with time. Slow love is natural. In fact, rapidly committing to a new partner before the liquor of attachment has emerged may be more risky to long-term happiness than the first getting to know a partner via casual sex, friends with benefits, and living together. Sexual liberalism has aligned our courtship t- tactics with our primordial brain circuits for slow love. I am optimistic about the emergence of slow love. During our long agrarian past, our forebears married to please God the local community, and their extended family. Spouses were tied to the land and to one another. Where could you go with a ton of wheat? A host of associated beliefs about the sexes emerged, including strictly arranged marriages, virginity at marriage, till death do us part, and the credo that a woman's place was in the home. Unchained from the constraints of farm living, today singles are turning inward, choosing partners for themselves and taking time to wed. Where marriage was the beginning of a partnership in farming societies, today it is the finale. The marriage revolution going on today may actually enable more happy partnerships. Slow love is, after all, in our DNA. It's it's, um, interesting how, you know, growing up, you know, it was like, oh, my gosh, if you make this commitment and you said I do, then... That's it. It doesn't matter what is going to happen, you know, in life. You're going to have to keep that relationship alive, even if it dies. And that's crazy because, number one, I know that a lot of the religious beliefs do not want you to have sex before you get married. Absolutely not. How can you know what you're getting into? Persons 
part is bigger than you can handle? Or what if it's smaller than you would like it to be? Or what if they have horrific body odor that you can't stand or you can't stand their little corks or their whatever it is. They wear false teeth. They smoke too much. You know, whatever. whatever. You, yeah. you don't know what you the don't know the inner, like, habits that exactly. they do have or the traits that they have. And then you're stuck for the rest of your life with someone that is not compatible with you. Well, honestly, it goes even further than that. There was a guy who came out with a book about like courting the old-fashioned way where it didn't even involve kissing. And imagine you get into a relationship and you get, like, engaged and you marry someone and the first time you kiss them is at the altar. That's crazy. That is nuts. That's crazy. And then you you don't even like the way they kiss. Right. And that, to me, is, like, very important. If you don't like the way someone kisses, how can you live with that person? I know. So, you know, because they're not attracted. In the old days, I guess a lot of the stuff was, like you said, it was arranged marriages and just all, I don't know, it, it, you weren't supposed to be madly in love with a person. I mean, it's just like, okay, you found this person and now you're stuck with this person and you're making it work. Yeah, I mean, and if you have kids, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you know, it's it's like, that's like the ceiling of the deal right there. I mean, you have kids, you may not ever break away from your partner because my goodness, the kids, you know. You can't live your life based on that though, because happiness is important and when I in my fifty years I realize what wow, I have wasted all this time in my life and now for the first time in my life I actually find what true happiness is. Yeah. I have too. You know, I mean I was married for seventeen years and um unfortunately I chose wrong, you know. I mean, I chose regarding, you know, with regards to my, you know, religious upbringing and my religious convictions and how I felt I needed to be, you know. And um, it was obviously the wrong focal point that I chose in order to engage into a long-term lasting marriage, which in the end has dissolved into nothing. Exactly. I'm just glad that we did find each other, that we have so many compatibilities, you know, from music to... Hablamos like, español. I know, somos Latino, we're Latino, we're, you know, I'm Cuban, you're Puerto Rican. Yeah. We, we speak the same language, body language. The things that we do, I mean, it's just so amazing. And for the first time in my life, I've had, I've experienced this. I'm absolutely amazed every day as we grow, you know, just what is in store. I don't know, but I know it's going to be a beautiful thing. Definitely, because we've got all the bad stuff out of the way. You know, it's like Pretty people much. can't even imagine piece the challenges. Piece by piece. Yeah. It's like, okay, we dealt with this today. Let's see what else we're going yeah, to deal with. Exactly. But we've, we've really climbed a lot of hurdles in such a short period of time. So from now on, it could only be bliss. Absolutely. You know, and I'm very grateful. So we've Wow, seven minutes left, and we have oh. another article to talk about. Oh, dear goodness. Okay, we'll try. Well, you know, the waking times here, we're talking about the awakening, and it's something that I'm sure is very, very dear to your heart. The waking up process is a very personal experience. Once we become aware of the existence of a fabricated world we thought to be real and that our two natures, anything but what we've been told, there's no turning back. It may appear to be a lonely path, but we are by no means alone in this awakening. It is happening in all walks of life. Whether a banker, whether your banker or a corporate employee wakes up to the scam being pre perpetrated on humanity and pulls out the matrix, or a normal taxpaying worker realizes they're contributing to a military industrial machine hell bent on war, control, and world domination, we're all the same. And those are just surface issues compared to the deliberately socially engineered suppression of man's innate spiritual nature, whether we call it social liberty or the freedom to create and manifest as we truly are. There are many such triggers that wake people up. When a child dies from a supposedly prevented vaccine or becomes autistic for no reason, things change. Once someone realizes, you know, how the world was scammed on 9-11 and what the powers that be are willing to perpetrate such atrocities to promote their agenda, the digging begins in sincerity. 
In addition, that we have rapidly delved into an advanced military surveillance police state is driving many to ask some hard questions. And the answers can be startling and difficult to swallow, especially when you realize they have cut off all avenues of recourse. Another major issue is that it's more evident by by the day that our very health is under attack. Again, by complicit government and multinational corporations pushing GMOs, adulterated food, vaccines, pharmaceuticals, atmospheric aerosol, chemtrails, and the like, all of which have been proven to be extremely hazardous to humanity. Yet they push harder by the day, mandating programs after destructive programs. Meanwhile, natural and organic farming and foods, as well as supplements, are under intense attack by these very small same perpetrators. The truth about these issues and many, many more, including massive planet harming programs such as fracking, electrosmog, and the geoengineering assault of humanity are driving a major perceptual paradigm shift amongst all walks of life as we delve more deeply into who is doing all this and why. This is often the final breakthrough point for many people as the true picture starts to crystallize. The horrific realization that the powers that be are fundamentally a clandestine Kabul with frontmen comes into focus. These are powerful minions more interested in total control and weakening and subjugating humanity via health degradation, dumbed down education, mindless breed, bread and circus, government controlled media, depraved violence, and sex oriented entertainment, and a draconian militarized police crackdown. The ugly truth then comes to the fore. A quick perusal of history follows after all these things because it's happened in the past. It happened at 9-11. It's happened in Stalinist Russia, Communist China, Nazi Germany. And it's not all black and white. Good people working for bad people, powers and programs wittingly and unwittingly. Many are trying to change and improve our existing structure. Many good people are performing wonderful services within this overarching societal program thinking it can be changed. It can be changed constructively. What we're addressing are the overarching deceitful and destructive powers and mechanisms at play that are attempting to bring humanity into a weakened, subservient role to some sort of worldwide fascist control state, eliminating personal and national sovereignty to support and obey a very few powerful, self-appointed elites. Well, a lot of people have and continue to speak out, and what's the response? Anything contrary to the official narrative is outlandish conspiracy theories. As they parrot the phrase, you're either with us or with a terrorist, which results in the subsequent demonization and marginalization of any form of questioning or healthy criticism. Waking up from the media and education entrenchment is another shocker. Could they do such a thing? Could we really be facing such a totalitarian crackdown, and why? When I was young, there were over 60 media companies firing for audience, or fighting for their audience. Real investigative reporting, although it's always been tampered with or suppressed, was still available. Today, six mega corporations own all the media, the very same corporations that own much of the corporate, military, industrial, and agro-pharmaceutical infrastructure conspiracy is not a stretch. Of course, these power brokers would twist information to suit their intentions. The word conspiracy has been stigmatized for a reason. Don't ask questions or there will be consequences. It's crazy because, you know, we're talking about all this and the reality is that, you know, there is a plan for this planet that, wants to control. Definitely. And I, I first movie that I saw was Side Guys back in two thousand and seven. That woke me up and just created a spiral of event. I sold my business. I wanted no part of society. I I saw right through the curtain. Right. And it's scary because there is something going on. The majority of people are dumbed down by the fluoride by the food that they're eating, by the stuff that they're watching on TV, and they're not realizing what is really taking place. So they're just caught up in their lives, basically, their entertainment, their sports, their fun, their, you know, all the stuff that makes them busy. And as long as you keep the people busy, you're going to keep them, you know, under lock and key, basically. That and working their asses off, 
because they have all these bills to pay, and it's all part of that program. Just keep them working, keep them dumbed down, and they won't question. And this is how they've been able to actually pull what they're pulling. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious what's happening. And once you do realize that this is a ploy by the powers that be to destroy the planet, really, to destroy the people of this planet, then you understand the truth. Definitely. Well, this is one of those topics that we could talk forever, but the 30 minutes is up and then some. So uh, today's affirmation is, today I am brimming with energy and overflowing with joy. Guys, enjoy your weekend. Stay tuned for Monday, Monday's current events, and the supernatural. Nice, yes. So, and current uh, events. And current yeah. events, yes, yeah. definitely. Try to... Try to find the most current events for you and try to bring them and talk about them. Guys, whenever you get a chance, if you enjoy the show, check out the website, transitionradio.net. Also, we put the shows up on YouTube, share them with your friends, and uh, donate whatever you can. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. And if you can't live your truth, then it's just not worth living. Good Good night. night, everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.